Sorry. Talking about our future, <coughs> kids' education. The value of George Davido, Mashloka. Tzadik ben Tzadik. Okay, so we left off on the fourth point that talks about the reason why there is chutzpah and how to handle chutzpah. So because we had a Muna last week, let's refresh quickly the fourth points and we're going to go today in a very interesting point in continuation of this chutzpah point. So the first one is that whenever you are talking to your child, you have to find out the, if the reason that he has uh, chutzpah, is he exposed? Is he? Did he see this chutzpah from somewhere? Remember, Mr. Say chutzpah is a brazenness. If a child saw brazenness from somewhere, he's going to guess what? Continue. Child has the mindset of following whatever his society is. And by the way, that's every one of us. The less da'at you will have the more you will mock others. Mock, I mean to say, in a bad way, not in a good way. You will not emulate others. You will follow, uh, repeat what others do. Monkey see, monkey do. So many of the bad influence that the children get, and by the way, any person can get it also, is if he is lacking da'at. Gemara is telling us that the child, whenever he's small, he does not have da'at. That's why if he sells you something, the sell is invalid. What's the reason the sell is invalid? Because he's missing that. That means the. What do you guys think that means? Huh? No. 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 That is the power to differentiate between good and bad. What do we say? Right? What do we say? Where do you ask Hashem for the power? between the to differentiate in which bracha Baruch Atah Hashem Chonen Adat the power of the dat is the power of the dat is the power to differentiate between good and bad and this Rabotai the more you will understand that the more happier you will be in life in, even as an adult Many, a reason why a person is upset because he, defi he, he defines happy means the deal went through, the marriage got, were successful, the child got married, the success means happy. So he defines good like this, and if it's not like that, he falls into sadness. But if he will define happy that every single second Hashem is guiding me, I am by the hands of the number one power. He knows better what's for, what's better for me, so you will never fall into sadness. Even if you're not married, even if you have, don't have a child, even if you don't have panasa, even if you don't have whatever you're thinking you're supposed to have. If you don't get that, it does not mean that you should fall into sadness. So the power of that is the power to differentiate good and bad. Rabbi Nachman says that the whole power reason why people are losing their emunah is because chisarona da'at, because they don't understand which means they cannot differentiate between good and bad, what's the real good and bad in their life. So they feel that if I didn't get married, the girl canceled on me, it's a bad, new, bad news for me. Who told you the bad news? Maybe this girl will cause you the worst future tomorrow. And thank God three billion times that she canceled you now be, 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 instead of running with her tomorrow. Because you're missing the doubt of what's the future, what your future is destined as, you're missing that, you're thinking that Akadosh Baruch Hu is lacking from your success right now. So you fall into sadness, you fall into atzvut. And that's the mistake, what they, that's where the Yetzirah tackles us, at this power of that. So the child, Rabbi Zamir Cohen also says, the child is lacking this power, that. That means the power to differentiate. So for him, if you see, a child can play with a cockroach without any problem. You will jump 10 million times away from him. Add a neighbor, that the, 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 the mother had to tell the, the son, her son, it was uh, seven, eight years old, the cockroach is dirty, the cockroach is nasty, the cockroach is not supposed to be played with. They used to catch them in Israel, it's hot and it's humid, there's a lot of cockroaches in the old buildings. And they used to play with them. Yeah, but the big ones, the brown big ones. 
They used to play with him. I must play with him. I was like, I used to look at it. it was, uh, I don't know how he does it. But what is he missing? That. Why a child can come out of the, uh, the bathroom, not wipe 100%, and go the rest of his day with, with him, like this. What is he missing? Differentiation. What's right? What's wrong? It says, since he's lacking this differentiation, for him, whatever he sees around, it's, that's the way to behave. Because I saw this person behave like that. That's the, the, the mind that the child is growing according. That's it's very quick for him to understand languages. You teach a child when he's young three, four languages, he'll speak all of them. Go to an adult, tell him to three, learn three, four languages, very hard. What is he missing? The power of what others do, I will repeat. When we grow up, it's good that the child has no power of that because with the fact that he's lacking that, he has the power to grab and learn quick. If he will always select, is this good or is this bad, the information will not go into his brain. So what Hashem does, Hashem will eliminates the power of that from the child when he's born. So he will be able to grab. Don't think too much. That's the way to do. Follow. So the, the mechanism of the brain for the child works in a way, remove the dot so the child grabs. That's he grabs so quick. Why whenever you see a deal, you don't grab too, so quick? Who will jump on the deal right away? Whoever doesn't understand the business. He sees a house for sale. Wow, this house is million dollars. Listen to that. He is right away thinking that he found a bargain. He's thinking like all other sharks around didn't think, didn't see this bargain, only saw his bargain. Only, saw, only he saw the bargain. If all the sharks around didn't jump on this, it's already 10 days on the market, 15 days, 20 days. On. Why do you think that you found the bargain? Must be there's something that they know that you don't. So who jumps usually onto those false deals? Whoever has no, that. Why you see the guys that they are the, the, the smart ones in the business, they sit quiet because they have the power of the French here, this house is not going to give any income. This jewelry is not going to be sold anytime soon. The power of that eliminates you to grab this concept into your life, get this deal into your life. So what Hashem does in order for the child to grow, to learn, removes the dot. Don't differentiate, everything is good. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם שהכל נהיה בדברו. You see that also a person, whenever he learns a language, if he'll think 10 times before he starts speak the language, he, it's harder for him to start speaking the language. When a person starts talking the language, as he's going, he's going to pick up the right or wrong ways. But if a person says, I, I cannot speak in Russian, I understand you, but I cannot speak in Russian, example. Why is he cannot speak in Russian? Because he is using his dad too many times. What's the right word to say? So I rather not say. But if a person throws the dad away, whatever word comes out, comes out. You'll see that guy is running, catching the language faster. Why? Because he removed the dad. So what Hashem does when a child has to learn language, has to learn how to behave, what Hashem says, you have no dad. Take away the dad. It's good and bad. It's good to learn quick, quicker than an adult because adult doesn't have to. Adult will analyze; the child will not analyze. But it's also dangerous if you will expose him for bad things that he will not know to analyze that that's wrong. That's right. Take care of children. That's it. You have to watch all the time. Who is my child playing with? What's my child is looking at? What is my child exposed to in books? Exposed to in magazines? The, what age does that come to? Huh? It depends. On, every child is different. Rav Yosef says that if a person, example, in Alozal Balacha, for example, you need to combine him for Zimun, he has to be understanding who is he blessing towards. Right? So it could be, he says, usually six years old, a level of a dad, but he's not fully there until the Neshama comes to the brain, to the Moach, which is at the age of Bar Mitzvah, the age of 13. Then he's able to more comprehend, but he will still not 100% comprehend Gemara said until the age of 20. That's why if he sells a real estate, which is a real thing, real sale, it's not a phone, a cops, whatever, books, it's not a small thing, it's a big transaction, it's invalid until the age of 20. If an 18, 17 years old boy will sell you real estate, by Halakha it's not sold. By Halakha, not talking about American laws, talking about Halakha laws, by, until the age of 20. 
Only by the age of 20, he shifted from Sfirat Bina to Sfirat Da'at. Because at the first 10 years you are in Chokhmah, second 10 years you are in Bina, after the 20th year, where is the third, third step? Da'at. Chokhmah, Bina, Da'at. That's whenever you have a complete Da'at, you're able to know, is this cell, it's legit? You 100% want that cell to go through? Don't say tomorrow, oh, I was not smart enough. 17, 7 years old, I sold this house for half the price. I didn't know what I'm doing. Make a ta'ud, return my money back. He should not come up with this situation. Chazal said, up to 20 years old, your dad, the power of anil, an, analyzing, it's not 100% there. It's, weak. it's still weak, which is good and bad. That's why the, learner, the learning skills are very quick because they don't waste time for the brain to analyze. But at the same time, the exposure could be very dangerous. So says the, the rabbi over here like this. says, many, many times, the reason why the child is going to answer back to you, could be your grandchild also, could be your great-grandchild, could be your nephews, is one of the things is that they see that you don't deserve to be respected. They're looking at you like a bum, like a loser. Why? You sit all day home, do nothing, all day TV. You're not cleaning, you're not working, you're not helping, you're not doing chesed me, you're not doing anything productive with your life. So why should I respect somebody that is behaves like a bum, he does nothing with his life all day long? Whenever the child, the grandchild, the nephew sees Bobo, Papa, all day, does nothing with his life. He's a no shoot, he's a low loser. Is not productive about life. Mm. It says one of the things that the look people look up towards is people that are always doing productive things. Why, whenever Ravadi Yosef is coming, everybody, oh, Ravadi, Ravadi, why? You know, this person doesn't waste his time. If he came over here, if he came to this guy's occasion, must be something happening over there. It must be something big. What makes it big? The fact that you know, the knowledge that you guys know, this person is very, very busy. If he put away time to come to this guy's wedding, wow. To, to, put, to, to come to the synagogue, wow. The more the, your understanding how valuable this person's time is, and he still made time to come to you, wow, that's some, something special. So same thing, that wow that you wanna, we give for other people, we want to receive from our own children. And how do I keep that wow in the children's eyes? You always keep yourself in a productive, busy and productive way. Even if you're already retired, keep yourself always occupied. The moment the child sees that the father, grandfather is doing nothing, says of Zamir Cohen, he loses respect from, the, from this person. You're just a bum. You're just doing nothing with your life. How do you understand that? That's when the, the, it's How do you understand certain people a person is respectful? Somebody told you he's respectful? Huh? How do you know that? You don't know anything about him. Did you ever speak to Rabbi, the chief rabbi of Israel? Do you, do you really know what he knows or not? That you, you just know that he will not attend any occasion. Or any time. So he's productive about his time. That's what you think about him. You never talk to him in person, ever. Right. What makes you think that he is respectful is, is the fact that he's always busy with productive things. Either books, either learning, either opening yeshivas, either opening mikvahs, or whatever it is. He's always doing productive things. And the, by the way, husband and wife, Shalom Bait laws, is the same thing. Whenever the wife sees that her husband is not doing productive things, she also loses respect towards him. And then he gets upset because he thinks, I'm the head of the house. You're the head of the house because of? <laughs> what exactly you, it entitles you to be the head of the house? Is there anything productive you do besides sitting all day next to the TV and eating sandwich key? What if uh, you work from home? Okay, so you are productive. That's okay. Yeah, very good. You are productive. Always keep yourself productive. Learn Torah. Finish Tehillim, finish Zohar, finish Gemara, finish Halakha, finish helping somebody, drive somebody, help somebody build. 
volunteer, work, whatever it is that you have to do, but make sure your schedule is full of productive things. Don't ever find yourself just surfing the YouTube videos from, oh, you listen, you gotta eat this, Mr. Listen, you gotta work out like this, listen, you gotta do this. So much that goes on on this YouTube and the other exposures that sometimes you are, wow, one o'clock in the morning. I gotta go sleep, listen, it's already one o'clock in the morning. And uh, in the morning you wake up late, your wife says, ah, praspalia, canesoni pasol, naraboto apasdal. What does she say? In her heart, what does she say? No shoot. Many times Shalom Bait issues is because of that. Because the husband is not using his time being productive. Same thing vice versa. You're coming home and you see her all day on the phone. What right away, you, what, what is the feeling right away? Loser. Doing nothing. So part of respect for you, between human beings is that person is very productive with his time. Doing, giving that feeling to others about you will increase your respect in their eyes. You see, a guy comes to learn Torah. He comes to learn Torah, but he's, he's sleeping. A lot of people say, ah, on prichodzi tak. Для галочки. Attendance. It comes to the shoe, but he's not really in the shoe. In the shoe, who is the respectful student? Whoever is always there, is always taking notes, is always participating, is always on top of the game. In business and real estate, same thing. In jewelry, same thing. In any field. If you're a lawyer, if you're a seller, if you're a pharmacist, whoever you are dealing with, you see a person that is very productive about his time, you're looking up towards him. Same thing is in shoes, same thing is in business, same thing is in home, with your children or with your wife. So says Rav Zamir Cohen, irat kavod me'aorim, one number one thing that will drive the kavod of the children towards the parents, it's not only the yeshiva that you're going to send them to. Rabbi, I am upset about the yeshiva, my son goes. Could be. But that's not the only reason why your son talks bad to you. Number one reason he tells us over here, he has no kavod towards you. You know why? Because he says you are doing nothing about your life. That's one thing. Second thing is the way you are talking, the way you are smelling, the way you are dressed up. If a person is talking, in a very strict language and he uses the words that he doesn't want his son to use his daughter to use why using those words sometimes you lose your temper and you are saying different type of curses in russian the, the child grabbed it when you get angry this is the dialogue you repeat you hear Tomorrow he's using those words. I was with somebody on the phone. I felt so terrible. I don't know if I told you this. I was with somebody on the phone. His father walked into the room and he told him, why did you leave the, why did you turn on or turn off the lights? I don't remember. Uh, why you didn't turn off the lights? It's a fluorescent light. So by fluorescent, the more you're turning on and off, it costs more money. So the father is old school. He doesn't know that. So he feels that if you left the room, why didn't you, you didn't turn off the light? So he tells him, Alo, he tells him a curse. The son, the father tells the son. Alo, whatever. Put mm. And then, <laughs> why did you leave the room and didn't turn off the light? What was the response of the response of the child? He's 17, 18. Okay. He told him back, you old school uh, don't know what how electricity works. It was so unpleasant for me to hear the father and the son answering back. I said, wow. Look what it happens if a person does not teach himself when he's young how to talk to his children. Look what's going to be the return tomorrow. 
And the child is not happy being at home. The father was running after a mansion to have a beautiful big house. He still pays for the mortgage of it. He still goes to work thinking that this house is going to make me happy. And yet he is in that beautiful house suffering day and night. His heart is eating himself up. What type of child they have? And what's the reason he has such a child? Because that's the way the father raised that child. Whenever the father talks to him in a very arrogant way, the child repeats back in a very chutzpah answers. So it says, the way you talk to your children will increase or decrease your respect in their eyes. That's irat kavod. Third thing is the way you dress. If you are eating something and lo alenu, I call me kol kol. The shirt has a, can also count for zimun with you. <laughs> <laughs> One person, you and the shirt together. Three of you ate. <laughs> you eat. You leak. You do a goal. You know wow. You behave much not like a human being when you ever you're eating. The child looks at this. Remember the camera that we spoke about? Whenever the camera guys comes on the wedding, to, or with a phone today, they say, "Ah, say Masalto, what's gonna be with you? How are you gonna make sure?" Why? There is an eye that looking. Your children at home, there is an eye that looks. And the camera in the phone or in the photographer is not as bad going to pay back as the children looked how Abba talks, Abba behaves. Now, besides the fact that they will eat the same manner tomorrow, they have no manners tomorrow, besides that, they lost respect towards you. So it's a lost, lost situation. You taught them unintentionally, psikreshe, <laughs> to how to behave, even though you didn't intend for that. But that's the way you're supposed to eat. And Bechoraka. And whenever tomorrow he's going to ask him to do something, the child will have the brazenness say, No. How come he tells me no? I'm his father. Means to say, He should respect me. You only get respected whenever you are behaving in a respectful way. Imagine tomorrow the rabbi of the synagogue is coming to, with shorts to, to Bet Knesset. <laughs> Just imagine this. There was one that went out like this in Miami. Yeah. He, used to, he was the rabbi there. He used to come to the synagogue, shorts and slancy. No, no. <laughs> not, not in the Bukharian shul. They would stone him right away in a different shul. Different uh, Sephardic shul. <laughs> and you know those, uh, those uh, Miami uh, shorts that has the... Um, the palm trees, the palm trees, wow. that was the shirt. I still do now remember. The rabbi of the place. Now, used to laugh, ah, like this. It was, I'm telling you, was not pleasant uh, person to talk to. He knows Torah. You can talk to him, Torah, he knows. Not the whole Torah, obviously, but he knows. Here and there, he knows. You can talk to him. He's, uh, he's there a little bit. No. But ex uh, the behavior, dress code. Even in Florida, it doesn't match. So you have to ask yourself also, whenever you are, how you dressed up will affect a lot your respect from your children to you. I'm not talking right now, everybody has to go with suit and tie. That's not my point. My point is, the clothes you wear, make sure they are respectful clothes. Behavior, Behavior we spoke about, language we spoke about, clothes, we, right now we're talking about. A person is coming from work, and he is, his kid's talking to him, his wife's talking to him, he falls asleep on the plate. Been there, done that. Yeah, been there. So you what? Imagine right now you coming to a you're gonna to come to a synagogue. You see the rabbi sleeping on a plate of food. What is your impression about this rabbi? But they're not gonna eat if I don't work. True, I'm not saying no. So sometimes. True, I'm not saying no. I'm not saying you are a bad person. But what's going to be the result when you are coming to a synagogue? You don't know anything about this person. They told you this is the rabbi. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> he is sleeping on a plate of food. What's the impression? Ma listen, maybe he had a tough night. Maybe he did tikkun chatzot. He saved people from jail. Maybe he did shivu pitu pitu shivu yim. What could be nachon? Maybe he did atzalakos. Maybe he saved life. Maybe his wife gave birth last night. Who knows what happened? All this is justification. But what's the result? Right away, we lost respect from this person. What, what age the baby, the son, the kid, God remembers this as one, two, one, So there is two parts of your memory. One is subconscious. Second one is conscious. The subconscious remembers everything from any age. Even from like... For anything. Two to, from the one day old. The birth, the day, as it was Whenever they put your the sleep, yeah. and they go like this with this thing, wow. you can go back to the day you just came out of your mother's stomach. Feel the pain of coming out. Yeah. The subconscious, everything is there. Yes, yes. I had a person in yeshiva, whenever I was in yeshiva, there was one guy over there that knew how to do this. If I'll tell you the name of the person that he put to sleep, you will be all shocked. You all know him. Very famous today. Today is a very famous rabbi. He was with me in yeshiva. Hypnotism. Hypnotism. He hypnotized him and put him back. He asked who wants to be a volunteer. Previous kid who also came. No, he didn't. He didn't. He said I can do it, but it's dangerous I, because I can lose it. If you, if you, not gonna come back, you can stay in the previous Gilgul. Yeah, it's scary. When he said that, no, I don't. I didn't want to volunteer. But this guy what volunteered. He volunteered. He put him back. 20 years old, 15 years old, he goes slowly. Tell me what you see when you're at your bar mitzvah. It was so quiet at night. He's laying on the, it, we had a tennis ball. A, 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 a tennis a no. table, table. He was he's laying on the tennis ball. He's, he's sleeping, yeah, he's sleeping. It was late at night, like one, two o'clock in the morning. And he tells us, I see this, I see that. What do you see in your bar mitzvah? I said, then he puts him even earlier, five years old. He got to an age one years old. He says, I'm sitting on the carpet. My mother watches the TV, doing this. He, 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 he could not speak at one years old. The subconscious, everything, everything is there. The police can hypnotize people and uh, get, in Israel, I don't know, in America, and get license plates. Whenever a person has a shalom that, uh, was hit and run, and uh, there was a terrible damage or life, has a shalom was taken away, they do hypnotize. The, he, t he says the plate number. It's the second thing that you saw. Six, secunda. This secunda remained in your brain forever. What are the chances somebody's going to remember a number of plate? Just by one second of looking at it. At it. And a, a, an accident moment. That you were all stressed at the time of the accident. Now imagine what you see purpose. So if a person is looking intentionally in any given time, in any given moment, no matter how tired you are, no matter how sleepy you are, you saw it, it's registered by you forever and ever. That's the subconscious. The conscious is whatever you, the brain uses, uh, pulls only whenever you need. You know, it's like today cloud. You know, in the cloud, you have all the information, videos, files, books, right, everything. It's all there. Whenever you are tapping into that, it tells you, wait, download. What download? It's already there. No, it's already there in the subconscious area. When you press on it, it pulls down to your conscious area, so you can use it. Same idea. So, to be able to connect all the time between your subconscious to your conscious is a different lecture, it's a different Torah. Now, whatever he tells us over here, if you will come right now, and you will see this person sleeping, on his plate. What would be the impression? Very, very bad impression. You will not have any more respect to that person, even though he has all the justifications in the world for doing that. Last two weeks or three weeks ago, a rabbi, very famous rabbi, I'm not going to mention names. Obviously, remember me, I'll never mention names. Came to divorce with his wife. Yeah. You, we all know him. Me, I also know him. You, you also know him. Everybody knows him. He came to you? No, he came to the bed, to divorce. Now, because I know him, I didn't want to show my face. I didn't want him to be embarrassed that 
for that situation. I was wife screams at him and I, and I was like, wow. Any respect I had towards that person ever, Avtamatitsky goes away. Why? It's not his fault. Maybe his wife is the Who knows? Maybe he's the I don't know. Whatever the story is. But such a screaming, such a language, such a thing. It's like, wow. Says Rav Zamir Cohen, you want your children to respect you? It's not about what yeshiva is sending only. It's also affects, but it's not only that. Keep your respect all the time on a high level. The more you will keep your respect on a high level, the more by default the kids are going to respect you. But also the spouse has to also respect the other spouse right. in order for kids to learn. That's also true. That's also true. If your spouse has to show and puts you down in front of the children, that's it. You lost respect. And we said last time, if you remember, whenever your child did something wrong to you, who's supposed to be the one to give him Zamichanya? The other side, not you. If, you, if your son talked to you bad way, your wife's responsibility hearing that is to give the note, the, zamicha, the rebuke to the child, not yours. Because if you, by default, is, you bias. The child feels, ah, Abba tells me not to talk like that, not because it's bad, because it hurts his respect. <laughs> right. But I, that's nothing wrong with this type of words, this type of tone, this type of eyes. There's nothing wrong with this. It's only Abba is a very egoistic person, is a very haughty person. To him it bothers, but it's not really a problem. So when the father is going to say, don't talk to, with people in such a way, in such a tone, in such an approach, he said, Abba is just looking for his personal respect. But it's not true. Behemet, it's okay to go like that. It's okay to speak like that. It's okay to lose this language. So Rav Zamir Cohen advised us always, the neutral person out of the story should give the rebuke. The child feels, oh, mommy has nothing, no gain in it. So when she told me not to talk like that, not to not to use this language, not to use this tone, oh, it's a myth. It's a, I should I should stop doing that. So whenever you hear at home the child disrespects your wife, it's your obligation to stop him right there, either right there or afterwards. But don't let it just forget about it. Sometimes whenever the child talks to your wife in a bad way, it was after your wife spoke to you in a bad way. So what's the natural reaction we? Ah, I mean Batar Shavi. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Rabbi, you see? Hashem has his messengers to pay back the Hashem the right time. Melachtam shel tzadikim na'azet al yadeh acherim. See? Every action has a reaction. So what do you do for your personal gain? Revenge, you stayed quiet. Your wife was placed down, her respect, you stayed quiet. By, new, by reality, tomorrow, whatever you're going to be placed by, down by that same child, your wife's going to stay quiet. So it's very important, this mutual understanding that you have to always back up her respect in front of the children, and she has to back up your respect in front of the children. It's, just, it's a mandatory thing in the house, regardless on a personal level what you guys both have. You both have a problem, you'll solve them after. Imagine a policeman pulls you over and you have a problem with your wife. He doesn't care. You're not going to show right now the problems in front of your policeman. He's not going to, he's just going to make things worse. If she, if he asks for license registration, the license registration is under her seat right now. You're going to ask her nicely, can you please give me license registration, even though you're about to kill her, for how upset you were a second before. Why? There's a policeman here. So you can control your personal problems whenever there is a need for it. Same thing is with the children. Even though you're very upset, you have all the reasons in the world to be upset. Right now, your child put down mama's respect. You must jump in and say, this is not the way you talk to mom. Just doing that many times will solve your personal problems also. Because mommy sees, ah, Abba cares about her respect. Just this already comes down the fire. Continue the Rav Zamir Cohen and says in Maseret Kiddushin Daflamid, there is another, he says, program that we have in our mind. Every one of us has this program in the mind. Jewish program, Jewish uh, person. Gemara says, how can we increase the kavod of the child for the father? 
says the Gemara, Tanya Rebi Omer, Galui Vyadu, if Nemisha Amar Vaya Olam, Sheben Mechabed et Imo Yoter Meaviv. Mepnesha Meshtar del Tob, Bedvarim, Lefiha, Hegdim, Akadosh Bahu, Kibud, Av, Le Kibud M. Galui Vyadu, if Nemisha Amar Vaya Olam, Sheben Mitiare Meaviv, Yoter Meimo. Who is the son, the child, doesn't have to be a son, could be a daughter also, has more awe from father or mother? Father. Why? You guys would think why. He's taller, he's stronger, he is more authoritative, he's his blessed. voice is more authoritative, whatever he says always goes. That's what you guys think, Nakon. That's what we all think. Listen what the Gemara says. Says the Gemara, when you spend five, ten minutes a day, a week, whatever it is that your schedule allows, but it has to be cons consistent. On your schedule, you learn Torah with your child, your daughter, your boys, doesn't matter what you have in life. You spend five, ten minutes on Shabbat, personal time with your child. About what? Torah. You share a certain halachot. You share. Right now, there's so many halachot, nine days. So, all day questions. Rabbi laundry, rabbi shaving, rabbi this, rabbi that. Millions of questions, just this. Your children has also those questions. Your child, let's say you have a daughter, 12 years old. She helps mommy to laundry. She puts the laundry machine. She sometimes puts the dryer. She sometimes an iron. Whatever it is that you are appointing them to help you in the house with. If the father never said halachot Shabbat in the house, the father always talks about nonsense, about business, about Putin, about money, about people, about Lashon Ara. All the Shabbat conversation is always about empty pustor as gavot. Oh, where did you buy that fish? Oh, you want fish better? Oh, where did you get that meat? Or you want meat better? Most of the time, pay attention. That's where people spend their time on Shabbat table. About. Where did you get this product? Where, oh, in Costco is cheaper. Oh, yeah, last time I bought it in BJ. Ah, yeah. Habibi, BJ, Costco. What do you have to do right now about this? Right now is the time that you as the father, as the moment, because this is the only time you're sitting with your children around one table. Influence them with Torah. Says the Gemara, because the father teaches these children Torah, by default Hashem puts in the mechanism of a neshama, fear from the person that teaches you Torah. Torah is such a power in it, it's a chemistry, it's something that makes the neshama look up, oh, about this person because he taught you Torah. So it's very important that we spend time. And last time I told you, the time has to be personal. It's a mistake that people take their five years old, seven years old, nine years old, 15 years old, 18 years old. Oh, well, okay, let's learn together. No, it's not learn together. The 18 years old is bored to his core. The story that you saw right now to the three years old and the five years old bothers the three years old. And then he says, bothers me. And then he say, guy, I cannot learn with you. Ah, you see, these children, it's impossible to learn. I have a spot. <laughs> Waste of time. Why is it a waste of time? You don't cater whenever at your work, five clients at the same time. Why are you giving your personal time five kids at the same time? That's one number one, he says, mistake whenever you give time to your children. It's better to give five, ten minutes per child in total one hour versus one hour to all of them. Much more productive. And the child feels, Abba gave me his personal time. Abba is a very busy man. He has no time for anybody. But he gave me time. Wow. You just made the child feel one million dollars. Before a session. Continue the rabbi and says that that's the punchline of the shoe. It's the next point that I told you. is Agdarot Burot. This Rabotai mistake repeats every single time in their houses between the husband and wife and between our parents and children. Clear orders. Look at the example he gives. You take right now your child to the synagogue and you tell him, you want to come to the synagogue? Reuben, J David, Shimon, yes. You're going to be a good boy? Yes. You promise? Yes. Okay, let's go. He comes to the shul and he takes out his bicycles that he parked uh, before Shabbat somewhere and he's in the park, in the Bet Knesset, and starts driving with his bicycles, with his scooter. People look at you, huh? 
Miriam and his son, what is this? You come to each other, take his ear. You told me you're going to be a good boy. He said, I look, hold on a second. When yesterday, when I was in the kindergarten, the kindergarten said, the, the teacher over there said, who wants to be a good boy? Drives his scooter. <laughs> so when Abba told me, are you going to be a good boy? <laughs> of course, why not? A good boy means in the, in the kindergarten, drive a scooter. Not sitting back in the couch. Do something about your life. A good boy. <laughs> That's what a good boy did in the kindergarten. Now remember, child has no power of analyzing. So what does he think good boy of Abba means? Whatever the kindergarten good boy meant. And you're grabbing his ear like he's a criminal. What, what did he do? Where was the mistake that he right now was riding a scooter in the middle of the synagogue? No instructions. What is a good boy? He didn't define good boy. Jonam, you know, I'm so upset. Could you be a better wife? <laughs> what does better wife mean? Can you please elaborate? Can you clean better? Clean what better? There is so much to clean in this house. Clean what better? <laughs> everything. <laughs> define what everything means. <laughs> That's a mistake. So you have to I'm going to tell you what details. 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 Sometimes there's one thing that bothers you in the bedroom. One thing. That there was something dirty. I said, John, can you clean the bedroom? Okay, she cleaned. You didn't say what bothers you in the bedroom. So there was something that she didn't know that this bothers you. You come at night, you see the same thing is there. So I asked her to clean. Rabbi, how much I can take this wife? Rabbi, how much I can handle? Rabbi, it's called Kamagut Serpej. I was just I not I was just not because she's a bad wife, because be, you are a bad instructor. Set your expectations lower, no, Besides that, let's say you have expectations, but at least explain them. Before we're going to put the work on your emuna, on your ga'ava, let's put down expectations. You right now have a problem with your ga'ava and your expectation. Besede, that's one problem. But at least direct that problem the right way. It bothers him that the, the window seal was dusted. He feels like the house is not taken care of. So he tells his wife, John, can you please today, please today clean the room? Okay, okay, no problem. She came, she put your navlechka, a new one. She made sure to put your clothes in the right place. She made sure to wash every single part of the floor. But because the Zanaveska was covering the windowsill, she didn't pay attention to that. You're coming back home, you say, did you clean the room today? First thing in the world. <laughs> uh, she didn't do nothing. Your Masabotai conversation, uh, communication, it's a mandatory in relationship. No conversation, no, no uh, communication. It's a recipe for disaster. There is one guy, Bechora, Mama Bechora, he had two children, boy and a girl. Boy and a girl. He has a lot of money, this person. But he tells one of his relatives that he hates his son. He says, when, my, when I'll die, I'm not going to give one dollar to my son. To, to such an extent, I, I, I hate him. Why? Why? Because of these mistakes. Because he told his son to do a, be a good boy. And he didn't instruct what a good boy means. So he, the son did whatever he thought a good boy means, and it was not according to the father's Expectation. expectations. So he's upset. My son is not respecting me. Why should I love him for? So he said clearly, I hate my son. So I said, why a person have to go? Well, how much suffer he has to have in his heart to say such a line? He says, well, tomorrow I'll die. All the millions I have, I'm going to give it over to somebody else, not to him. Why? Did he beat you up? No. Is he a druggy head, drug head? No. Why, why you hate him? No, he disrespected me. 
Wow. Every time I ask him something, he doesn't do it. Before you get upset on whatever you asked and he didn't do it, did you find out? How, you ask? how did you ask? <laughs> Pay attention about how many times this mistake repeats itself. Same thing goes for the car. You tell her, Jonah, can you take the car today to wash? It's dirty. Now he means dirty, his coffee spilled next to the, what do you call this thing? Shifting gear. Gear, shifting gear? Uh, it's stick shift. It's, it's it's sticky over there. Stick now the Spanish guys jumped in, bah, or he or she did it. Vacuum, bah, she vacuumed all the carpets, but this thing remained sticky. What did you mean whenever you said, say, listen, I had a coffee with sugar, it's peeled over there, make sure that they will do this and that. <coughs> the rabbi said, it's funny that we expect, the, the, especially men, that it's very hard for us to elaborate. He says, it's such a fault of, of, our, of us as a, as a father or as a husband is that we don't elaborate. And yet, anytime you're gonna go outside, and there is instructions. None of the instructions says, please be a good person. No, they tell you, don't throw garbage here. No parking, no standing. No, they tell you details. No standing from this time to this time. No parking from this time to that time. They don't say, please park nicely. What does park nicely means? Imagine you would have such a stand uh, the message outside, P please park nicely. And the following morning you come and you have a ticket. You say, what? Well, I park nicely. Yeah, but you park right in front of a driver of somebody. He didn't say no. He said, no, parking ni park nicely. I park very nice. I didn't beat anybody in the back. I didn't beat, uh, get anybody in the front. Very nice. So it comes out that whenever you are talking, he says, don't expect the child or your wife or whoever you work, employees, whatever you are surrounded with. Communication doesn't mean just, okay, let's spend time, semichki, chai, and talk about just shtuyot. Communication means elaboration. Whenever you are talking about certain things, elaborate. Don't say, my wife has to understand me with one glance, Rabbi. <laughs> How? How? Because that's what he was using from his parents. <laughs> that's a mistake. That's a mistake. That we think that because my mother understood my father with one glance, so first glance she already has to understand me also. <laughs> your father didn't have Lexus. Neither your mother had a Lexus. <laughs> it's a different reality you live in. They live in a different reality. Don't compare their life to your life. Your mother, whenever she lunch, she took the clothes to the river. She took the clothes to who knows where. She did it by hand. Today, your wife press a button. It's a different life. So you have to, so to. Maybe your father and your mother understood each other by glance. Every one of them. But today, it doesn't work like that. You have to elaborate a lot of times. All the times. And the last thing he says, and this very scary thing, is the exposure to the media. It says, it brings over here, I just, I'm just going to make it very short. It brings a lot of goish, even ex at um, exp uh, experiments. Uh, that research. research, that's the word, thank you. Researchers that they made, how the child, because he's lacking this data that we spoke at the beginning of the shoe, has no up chance to differentiate what he sees in the, computer, in, the few, in the video and real life. He feels that this is 100% real life. So if he sees somebody bothers and runs away. Cartoons. Cartoons, bothers and runs away. That's what he's gonna do. That's exactly what he's seeing. That's what he do. The video shows you bother somebody, you run away. That's how you are running, running life. And then you are putting something for him sticky to fall and then he does this and then he falls. And then all the thing that he sees over there, it says will affect his real life. Not only that he says, it gets so scary to the point that he even dreams about it. So it says, in case Chas a person was watching a video, and in that video, Meir, he saw fight, fist fight. He says, fist fight to death, or fist or Chas Shalom, another way of executing somebody, by shooting, by bombing his car, by bombing his bed, by cu cutting off his head. Depends how graphic you want to get in that video. Uh, I saw most graphic. 
No, no, no. no. Well, the graphic thing that he saw, it says, children came to him. It says there was one mother comes to him. It says she went to every doctor. Her child dreams about that people are going to come in the middle of the night and cut off his head. So she doesn't know. She's not religious. She doesn't know. She goes, she says to that, the child where cannot sleep. She walks into the room, one o'clock in the morning, he's scared, he cannot fall asleep. Two o'clock in the morning, scared, start crying, they're tired. When they're tired, they, you know, become cranky, start crying, crying, crying. And she says, listen, that is not a sin. That is not a dochka. Such a headache with them. Why they cannot fall asleep? It says, they, she goes to every psychologist, all psychologists, to get this medication, that medication, this exercise, they make sure she breathes like this, make sure she drinks like that. Three million ways. It says none of the things work. Chaisha said, listen, the, my babulia said, rabbis have a power. Let's go to the rabbi, ask him, maybe he'll give a blessing, zgula, maybe to put some azuzah under the pillow, so something, I don't know what's going to be. <laughs> Chai comes to the rabbi. The rabbi tells her, listen, he comes, she, she comes to Rav Zamir Cohen, that's what he, say, he says here. He says, he, she comes to the rabbi, and she says, rabbi, you have any zgula, that's what you have, you have any zgula, any good luck charm to make my child fall asleep better? So look what the, the, the rabbi tells her. Ask her, listen, is your daughter, it was a daughter in the story, is your daughter a sensitive person? She said, yeah, tell the truth, she's more sensitive than any girls in the school, in the, in the class. She's very, very sensitive. She says, is your daughter watch TV? Says, yeah, we watch all together. Coming from work, I put dinner, everybody turned the TV. The father, the children, me, everybody watch TV. It says, that's the reason why your daughter and your son cannot fall asleep at night. It says, you guys, adult, has more power of that, which is the power of an analyzing the real life and fake life. Good and bad. Good investment, bad investment. You have much more power to do so than a child. Child has no that power, and we explained to you in the beginning of the show why Hashem did it that way. For him to be able to grab whatever he sees. So it says, because you watched a video, a cartoon that is, did such a thing, the child feels that that's what's going to happen to him. So with time, he says, they stopped the watching of these things. They start making sure what they're watching. Now, not to watch anything, it's very hard, especially in our generation that we're so used to this. So even if you have to watch, make sure you, you watch something that it is Education. educational, First, you get a reference from somebody about it, that he saw it, or you see it personally first, from the beginning till the end, you see that it's 100%, okay? Then you're allowed to expose it to your children. Like you make sure that the chicken that you put is 100% fresh, nothing is spoiled, some uh, mold over here, some mold over here. You don't just take it and put it. You don't just take uh, vegetables and you put it in the soup. You make sure it's clean. You make sure it doesn't have any mold parts. You don't just dump into the pot and expect to have a healthy and tasty food. Same thing about how much more so is for the neshama of the children. Do not expect that the child is going to have a healthy future if you expose him to same things that are not healthy. In order for you to make sure that it's healthy, ex uh, examine it first yourself after you say it's 100% kosher or somebody reliable from your relatives, your cousin, brother, sister. And yet, obviously, show 100%, then you're allowed to put this video, this recording educational thing for you, for your children, to watch it as their TV time or as their, uh, you know, uh, uh, entertainment time. But this is not the best thing. The best thing is that to take it out of the house to totally, uh, completely. Better is that you will give them personal time whenever you're at home, then the TV is gonna entertain them. But I'm talking about even to the people that still have it in the, in the house, make sure that you are first seeing it yourself Examining it that if this information you want to pass over to your children, then you'll be allowed to share it with them and not expose them to anything bad. So, Baruch Adonai Amen. So, what is the entertainment? It's always education. It's always education. Yeah.